word of their testimony is their lifestyle, not just in word only. So 1 John 1, 5 says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of his son cleanses us from all sin. Amen. If we don't walk in the light, our sin is not cleansed. Mm. It's only cleansed. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Bill, I think the fear of the Lord, I want you to touch on the fear yeah. of the Lord because it deals with the blood of Jesus, the word of our testimony, which is our lifestyle, right. not just our words. When we call on Jesus, we're not calling on a title. We're calling upon the name, which is the word anima in the original Greek in the New Testament and the word shem in the Old Testament, which means name means power honor, position, attributes, character. We call upon the name of Jesus. But see, we see, invoke the character, the power, the honor, the position, the attributes of the King When of we Jesus. tell people that uh, it's not just your words, but it's how you live your life, mm -hmm. you can't live your life without His power. Yeah, it's impossible. And, the, and you can't get His power without the fear of the Lord because yeah. you don't understand that you need His power. You think you can do it on your own. You think you can go to church, you can read your Bible more, and you're going to get this. It takes the Spirit of God. Yeah. Because it takes God to know that you even need God. Repeat that. It's so important. It takes God for you to even know that you need God. It's not the judgment. It's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. See, you can be, listen, you can go to the biggest meetings. You can watch the most incredible movies or video, Christian movies, Christian videos, The Chosen, whatever. Which are great. Oh, they're wonderful. And you can read books, and you can bring in anointed speakers into the prison. If we're talking to prisoners today, if we're talking to prisoners, I'm talking to you. We're going to talk about prisons here in a minute uh, because I love prisoners. That's, that's my whole life. I've been going into prisons for almost 39 years. I've been in over 500 different prisons. I love you guys and you ladies that are in those prisons. But I'm telling you, you can't even, when when you bring in, a, if we bring in some, if I bring David Harabedian into your prison to speak, very anointed man of God, very anointed man of God, or I could bring in anybody, you tell me what preacher you like, I'll bring him in there. And he comes in and he speaks, that won't do it. Mm -hmm. It takes the Spirit of God. Yeah. And Jesus said these words, you can't just be walking around the yard out there today and say, I think I'll become a Christian. You can't go to chapel next week and go, I think I'll become a Christian. Nobody Because can. Jesus said, no one, no one can come to me except the Spirit of my Father draws them. You can't just decide to be a Christian. God's Spirit has to draw you. And God's Spirit has to, God has to give you a revelation of who He is before you'll get a revelation of how much you need him. Yeah. You don't realize you need somebody that you don't have a revelation of. You don't understand who he is. Bill, it comes back to David, how are men's souls saved? Yeah. I don't know, Lord. It is the presence of God that convicts a man of his sin. The presence of God withdrawn means sin will remain. So I began to pray the presence of God upon people. Yeah. Lord, I pray and I release your presence over Billy or over Jimmy or Sally right. or Shanika or Boo. Doesn't matter. Yeah. And and I would pray that and then they would start to get visitations and convicted yeah. by the Holy Spirit. If your children are wayward and they're not saved, we're gonna pray a prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we pray your presence yes, would Lord. come upon the prodigal wayward children yes, without God. your presence. We will never have a desire for you, but it is not your your judgment. It is not your guilt or shame or mm. condemnation. That's of the devil, but your goodness that leads men to repentance. We pray the presence of God upon the children and we pluck them out of the fire. Yes. Right now, we pluck them out of drug addiction. We pluck them out. Father, I thank you for now releasing mm. dreams and visions of the night as deep sleep falls on men as they slumber in their beds that you would bring the fear of the Lord that would turn them from yes. wrongdoing to preserve their souls from going down to the pit or perishing by the sword. Even as you saved Bill's life on eight different notable occasions, you saved my life on different occasions, Lord. We release the redeeming mm. presence and convicting presence of God Almighty yes. by the Holy Spirit in the lives of yes. these children and grandchildren and unsaved loved ones, for it is your presence that convicts a man of his sin. Yes. And we thank you for reaching them through radio and TV and individual and visions and dreams. Mm. And however you choose to, Lord, mm. we call forth 
redemption by the blood of the Lamb mm -hmm. right Thank now you, in Jesus. the lives of our loved ones. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. On the road to Emmaus, they walked with Jesus, Bill. Thank you, Their Lord. hearts burned within themselves, but they didn't even know it was Jesus in the resurrected state. And they'd been with him three years. Their eyes were holding. And then, this is what it says in the scriptures, he would have turned off to spend the night and he would have kept walking. And they constrained him. They said, no, stay with us. And the minute they said that, they wanted more of whatever he had that they felt burning. Then their eyes were open and they saw him for who he was. Yeah. I remember I was getting ready to get sentenced the next day. And I was in Leavenworth Penitentiary in Building 63 where the Birdman of Alcatraz had his birds. Right. Where if you're not right with God, you're always just one heartbeat away from hell. 200 cockroaches in the prison cell. And there was two prisoners with me. Big George was doing life plus one, 90. And my co-defendant didn't know he was getting ready to turn state's evidence on me and get out in a couple years. You know, God bless him. But, but anyway, here's what happened. I chose to get out of bed to pray a prayer on that cold prison floor in cell number 13 in building 63. And I chose by faith. I had no unction, no desire, just a thought. I'm going to sentence him. And I got down on one knee. I was still so prideful. And the Lord said, you know, he just prompted me, can I get both knees? Wow. Absolute surrender. Wow. So I got down on both knees and they pitied me. They were in their little, you know, metal bunks or whatever. So they were going to abide with me in prayer. As I began to pray, I said, Lord, I go to sentencing tomorrow. I go alone. You know, my co-defendant's not going with me. I don't know what I, I face. But Lord, I ask you for your mercy. And I got ready to get up. But see, I'd constrained the Lord. I'd reached out to him. All that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And I called upon him. And Bill... As I got ready to get up, the atmosphere in the room changed and it became pregnant with God's love in his presence. And big George, who'd done 26 out of the last 30 years in prison, was looking at life plus, I think 90 or 190. He all of a sudden was curled up. He's a guy your size. He's curled up as a presence came in. And all of a sudden I began to speak by the spirit. I got filled with the Holy Spirit in that moment and my co-defendant got full interpretation of the tongues. So I would say something in English and it would be in my co-defendant's mind in my book, Jet Ride to Hell, Journey to Freedom, which is on the prison tablets. His name is Vic. The names have been changed to protect the guilty. And so uh, he would get interpretation. So I would say it in English, then I would seal it in tongues. Vic would get the interpretation back in English and this went on and all, and all of a sudden, Jesus appeared to us in the prison cell in front of the other two prisoners. Didn't say anything. He was in a white robe right by the shower there in building 63. And I could see his presence. And he stayed about 15 minutes, never spoke to us. And all of a sudden, you know, he had disappeared. It was almost like he transported, manifested, teleported in like the Starship Enterprise. I don't want, don't want to put words on it that people, I just want to give an illustration how people can May God give you your own visitation. He wants to visit you. Amen. If you'll constrain him, your eyes will be open. If you reach out to him and call upon him, be safe. I double dog dare you to call upon Jesus three times at night or wherever you're at from your heart. And he will show up. I double dog dare you. If you Amen. don't, you don't have a hair on your backside if you're not willing to take this dare. Amen. He'll show up. All that call upon the name of the Lord, he'll save and he'll deliver. And all of a sudden, an evil presence started to manifest in, and we started to rebuke it. And the Holy Spirit said in tongues and interpretation, you must unify and rebuke him together in the power of agreement. For one can put a thousand to flight, two can chase 10,000. We began to do that, and all of a sudden, it diminished and left. And all of a sudden, I saw a cloud on the floor the size of a man's hand. And I thought, test the spirits. We just had Jesus. We just had a devil, right? And it was a cold, icy feeling. And uh, as extreme opposites as you could get in those two spiritual encounters in the same prison cell, we're locked in that cell. It was cool being locked in with Jesus, but not cool being locked in with the devil. Yeah. Anyway, what happened was I saw that cloud on the floor the size of a man's hand. And I said, do you know Jesus? Test the spirits. And when I said, do you know Jesus? It sparked 
gold and silver or gold and platinum and began to fill the floor. And it filled the floor. Later, I would find out this is the Shekinah glory of God, the tangible manifest presence that you can feel and touch that appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration, the cloud that appeared in the Old Testament when they were brought up out of Egypt. It was a pillar of cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. Long story short, I'm in the cloud of his presence and I'm like a little kid playing. God's playing with his son. And I got my innocence back. I went from thinking God's last name was Dam as a tough goal, uh, drug dealer for the Colombian drug cartel, stealing jet airplanes for the Collies and selling, you know, poison in the streets of Kansas City to get my innocence back, my identity with my dad. And I heard the words drink from the cloud. And as I reached down to like pull up some of the presents, I pulled it up, it sprang back into itself. And I did this three times. Third time, I'm like, I can't get it. Well, he keeps going into us. Holy Spirit spoke to me. You must come to it, not it to you. We've got to come to God. Mm. And when we take a step toward him, right. he'll take a step toward us. Oh, yeah. But he's the one on the throne. Yes. And we have to switch positions with absolute surrender and say, God, I tried it my way. My best thinking got me 22 years. Yeah. But I'm going to try it your way. Yeah. And as I knelt in, I drank from the cloud, and I drank three times, and it went down into my lungs, went up into my sinuses. I was instantly healed. Bill, that was 1990, June 5th, 1990. And I've never looked back. That's 24 30, plus, 30. Yeah, 34 plus years ago at right. this point. We're in 2024. Yeah. And now I am did 20 years, got out, was single and celibate for five years. People thought something had happened to me in prison. I, they, they, why isn't he dating? I'm not dating. I'm waiting. Yeah. You know, and then I meet a woman who then becomes Miss America. Yeah. Right. And uh, she crowns women, daughters of the king of heaven. Their identity comes in. We're equally yoked. She was single and celibate, 16 years, single and celibate, 25 years. So we came together on the wedding night. We just celebrated yesterday our 10th wedding anniversary. Ah, uh, I know. And it pays to wait. Amen. And people that think, What's wrong with you? You're not going to date. I'm going to wait until the Lord shows me the one. Yeah. And everybody thought I was crazy. You know, that night when we announced that I'm dating, we lost six good female tithers, all single divorcees that night in our congregation. <sighs> I don't think that they were there for the right reason is my point. Yeah. But the glory of God changes a person. The fear of the Lord changes a person. Yeah. And so by that, God delivered me. I wasn't in abstinence where I battled it, I was in deliverance, where God had set me free. Amen. And why would you go back into the cage right. when he said, I didn't get myself out of the cage, but you didn't get yourself out of the right. cage. Right. We got our minds transformed, but he's the one that transformed our minds when we submitted absolute surrender and began to read this word of God and read out of it what it says and allow it oh, to yeah. change us instead of reading into it what we already believe and changing the Word of God to meet our needs, we have to allow the Word of God to change us. We all, with open face, behold Him and are changed into the same image and likeness of His Son by the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I got excited. Tell us about the Adobo tablets. Uh, the Adobo tablets. If you're in prison, there's about, right now, I believe, uh, Edovo is on about 800,000 tablets. It's an, it's an app on your tablets. and Like a tablet like this, but smaller. It's like yeah, a Kindle size. Yeah, a tablet size. like this, but there's a link on there. Show them what that looks like, David. So on, on a tablet, you can literally go, and there'll be like eight icons, one of them is under management. Apps. There's like eight of them, and one of them is religion and spirituality. And you click on that religion and spirituality, and when you go down there, you can go down and find virtual church media. And I think it might be under Heart of America Prison Ministries with this V logo. And what happens is they click on that. We've got about 50 ministry resource materials, including, Bill, books that uh, you and I wrote, Nuggets of Gold. We wrote that together with yep. other former prisoners, Diamonds from the Rough, and your amazing book, Nuggets, or The, the ult Ultimate Pardon. Let me tell you, this book is so powerful, you can't put it down, civilian or prisoner. I, I, rem I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was reading it and putting it on the blue nightstand next to my bed. I'd been out of prison and I would read it. I'm like, my eyes were just big. You know, not a lot of stories move me, right? Because I mean, I did some kind of extreme stuff. And so, yeah, you know, somebody yeah, yeah. talks about they stole a piece of bubble gum and I'm like, it doesn't move me, right? But Bill, I did some bad things, 
But compared to what you've done, I look like Casper the Friendly Ghost. No disrespect, but that's the redemption power. And your story was so riveting. I'd, I'd wake up at 3 in the morning and have to read another chapter. I'd wake up at 5 in the morning and have to read another chapter. I'd wake up and I'd read three or four chapters. I had to read your book all the way through. That book is on the Adobo tablets in 800,000 prisoners' hands and over, I don't know how many prisons. And then we dropped 50 ministry resource materials including my book, Jet Rydell, Journey to Freedom, which is my story of being arrested with a stolen jet, a Mercedes Benz, and a bag of cash at a private airfield in Florida where the feds came out of planes, trains, automobiles, screwed nine millimeters into my ear, ruined my orange juice morning. I didn't pass go. I didn't collect $200, but I went to jail, directly to jail for the next 19 years, six months, a week and a day in federal prison. And then Jesus appeared and radically changed me mm -hmm. in 1990. Long story short, that book, along with these books, are available in PDF, and also, my book's available in audio format so people can listen to the story. And people tell me that, 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 that read it. It's a great book. But people that tell me that they listen to it, they're taken like in the theater of their mind. It's as if they're literally in the prison with me watching the story like a motion pictures or listening to it yeah. on that audio book. And so we also got a mobile app for those that are outside of prison. And they can download our mobile app off virtualchurchmedia.com. And we've got a lot of the resource materials on demand from the palm of their hands. That's cool. So changing lives one Bible at a time. Yeah. Changing lives one ministry resource at a time. And paid for by the friends and partners of Prison Power Ministries and Virtual Church Media. Yeah. I call those books life-changing books because uh, every, you know, I get a couple hundred letters a month mm -hmm. and every letter almost says the same thing. I didn't have any hope until I read your book. I was thinking about taking my own life until I read your book. Mm. Uh, now I know God's the only rehab I need. You know, wow. those kind of things. I've got l just multiple, multiple little short testimonies from guys that have read the book. So, And I'm glad now that we uh, are using this Adovo tablet that we can put it, it's, it's out there for everybody. If and you're so, in prison, you've got a tablet. If you got, you're in a county jail, you've got a tablet. So go on that tablet. If Now, your county jail or your prison may not have Edovo yet, but Edovo is coming within the next couple of years. Edovo will be on every single tablet in the nation. Which is over 2 million prisoners. Yeah. So yeah. they have on-demand resources from right. the palm of right. their hand. It actually reduces recidivism. It reduces violence in the prison. People have something to do other than jaw jacking and playing dominoes, saying 10 then, right. put a nickel on it. Well, and the main thing is you get some peace, you know? The shalom peace of you God. Can't, you can't get peace uh, playing dominoes and playing spades, and you won't find peace in that. You won't find peace watching the games, uh, playing handball. You, you might get a fist peace. fight in the, in, in yeah. the TV room, but you know, another thing is, I never saw a guy put on his resume, what'd you do while you are in? What'd you learn? What was your educational level? I'm a First class dominologist. I played dominoes. Yeah. Can I get a job? Yeah. But when you're transformed by the word of God, the power of God, the presence of God into his image and likeness, and your face begins to glow with the goodness of God. And you, you may be in a prison where you're never getting out. Yeah. Uh, I just had a guy at our church a couple of weeks ago that did 30 years in Angola. He had life, L I F E. And when you get life, L I F E, in, in Louisiana, there's no probation, no parole, and no suspension of sentence. And he had life. And he's now the chaplain at Parchman, Mississippi. Bill, how is this possible? Explain this to me. It's amazing. I mean, it's David, this guy, his story is uh, it's too long for me to tell his story. We got to have him on. God did a miracle. And uh, Reggie, uh, there was no chance of Reggie getting out. He'd been out two hours. And the he miraculously got released. He miraculously and two hours later, got, he gets a call. He was riding with Mike Barber of Mike Barber Prison Ministries, and the commissioner of Mississippi, which is the head of all the prisons, knew he was with Mike Barber because that commissioner was the warden at the prison that he did thirty years for twenty five years, and he called him on the phone and said, "I need you to come up here and be my chaplain." And Reggie said, I don't want to go back to prison. I've been in prison 31 years. Don't want to go back to prison. He said, okay, I don't need you. God needs you. He got released on September 28th, 2020. 
and he was the chaplain at Parchman, October 20th, 2020, less than 30 days after he was out. So he's been there now four years, and he is on parole. His parole date's 2098. He gets off parole 2098. But he's now the chaplain. He's because the chaplain. He's been transformed by the presence oh, yeah. of God, and he was doing 200 miles an hour the wrong direction. Now he's doing 200 miles an hour with Jesus the well, right direction. Well, not really, because he did 31 years, and there was nothing that would go 200 miles an hour 31 years ago. <laughs> For illustration. But, but he, literally, he literally is one of the most incredible Christians I know. He's an amazing man of God. And but it's God only it because of him. God. But let me tell you this. You may be sitting in a prison doing life without. I've got friends that have five life sentences, 500 years, all that stuff. And you may be going, well, I'll never get out. But let me tell you something. You can be at peace while you're there. Mm -hmm. You can. I go to death rows all over the United States. I love to go to death row because I like to go to death row and tell the guys, you know what? Every heart has an expiration date. Mm. And I might drop dead while I'm standing here talking to you. But you guys are kind of in better shape. I'll step back where I'm talking to all the death row guys. Or I'll be on TV in Florida mm. talking to all of death row in the chapel over in uh, Rayford at Union. And I'm talking to the whole death row. And I'm saying to them, guys, listen, some of you have dates. So you're yeah. better off than I am because you know at 12.59 a.m. or, uh, you know, 1201, 101, whatever, you're going to die. I don't know when I'm going to die, but I got good news for you. None of you are going to die. I got good news for you if you're listening to me on the tablet from death row. You're not going to die. You're going to live forever. But you get to choose today whether you live in the smoking or non-smoking section. <laughs> Because we're all going to live forever, but we get to choose where we're going to spend eternity, in heaven or in hell. And I challenge you today, ask Jesus to come into your heart. Tell him you want to know his love. Tell him you want to know him. You want to know him intimately. You want to have a relationship with him. And you want to walk in the fear of the Lord and say, God, I need you to show me who you are. And he'll do that. Wow. Amen. You know, everybody is going to heaven, just not everybody's staying. It's appointed for man to die once and face the judgment. Right. Father, we pray for the goodness of God to come by the presence. Yes. And that you would complete the work of salvation in everyone that's listening. Yes. Whether they've never been saved, whether they're backslidden, whether they're walking with you and that, that an encounter would take them to the next level, whether mm. it's a road to Damascus experience, a visitation in a prison cell, of the glory of God or whether it's a dream or a vision of the night or just the word of God mm. that comes in and transforms. We pray yes. this and I feel that presence on my hands right now. I thank you, Lord, that you're opening hearts, you're opening minds. I break off this, this vice off your head mm. that has precluded you from saying yes fully to Jesus for absolute surrender. And now I pull you in to the purposes and plans of God for your life that you're destiny scrolls that have been written for you from before the foundation of the world in the Lamb's blood by his own hand. I release the destiny to be manifested in and through your life. Mm -hmm. And I break off the generational curse that's been on you and on your bloodline right now. Mm -hmm in Jesus name and if you need healing in your body just put your hand on that body part touch Lord I thank you for touching them mm -hmm. healing them every plant that's not been planted by my Heavenly Father Matthew 15 13 should be rooted up we pluck out sickness disease cancer addictions we break your power mm -hmm. we break your power in the name of Jesus. I yes. see a person in the spirit. It's, they've got an earring in their ear and it's symbolic of something. And God is saying, if you'll let go of that thing, I'll give you the all in. You know, in the Old Testament, it says that slaves were seven years and they'd be set free. But if they chose not to be set free because they loved their master, 
They would choose to become a bond servant and they would get an awl in their ear. God wants to replace what the world's earring represents to you. And he wants to give you the spiritual all in your ear where you're all in with him, absolute surrender. Mm -hmm. And you'll never look back like Bill hasn't looked back. I haven't looked back and God never puts you in a position to hear a testimony unless he wants to do something similar and greater in your life. If he did it for Bill, he did it for me. He'll do it for you. Yes. It is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Mm -hmm. And God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you way too much to leave you in your current condition. He'll set you free from the penitentiary of pride, the lockdown of lust, the bastille of bitterness. He'll free you from the shackles of shame and the handcuffs of hatred today if you just say, Lord, I call upon your name, the name of Jesus, the nature of of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the authority and the attributes of Jesus. I cannot deliver myself. Lord, deliver me and translate me out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of your dear son. I want to start afresh today. I confess my sins into the light and now I receive the blood of your son that cleanses me yes. from all sin. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Wash me and cleanse me. Make me anew. Fill me and use me for you and set my feet back on solid ground. Remove every crooked way in me and make me a straight shooter to hit the mark of the Lord. In Jesus' name, write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, God has done something amazing and it's only just begun. I'm David Herobini and this is Bill Corm. And we approved Amen. this message. <laughs> God bless you guys. God bless y'all. Hi, I'm David Herobini and founder of virtualchurchmedia.com. Thank you for your time today. I want to talk to you about something very important. It's about partnership. Many of you have been blessed by this ministry. Many of you have sown one-time gifts into this ministry. We're asking you today for your help because we're sending the gospel around the world, the gospel of the kingdom, and it's impacting lives. Whether you go into battle or whether you stay behind with this stuff, 1 Samuel 30, 24 says, we share equally in the harvest. So I'm asking you to pray and obey today and sow a one-time gift or partner with us on a monthly basis because whatever you do for him, he will do for you and your family members. And so thank you in advance. God bless you. Have you heard about our mobile app today? I wanna to talk to you about our amazing mobile app, helping change lives one resource at a time. You can download the Virtual Church Media mobile app and you can get access to all kinds of different resources, including a one-year Bible in English and Spanish and an audio Bible. You can get the Virtual Church on demand from the palm of your hand. Everything on the app is provided for by the friends and family of our Virtual Church Media and our prison ministries, Heart of America Prison Ministries. And we encourage you to download the app and get accelerated growth using technology because today is the day that God's called you deeper. Download the mobile app today at virtualchurchmedia.com, also available in the Android and Apple store. I'm David Herobedian and I approved this message.